Jesus, a name that has united and divided millions of people for the past 2,000 years. Numerous books were written about him. Movies, radio, and television programs were developed about Jesus in both reverent and satirical forms. Millions of people gather on a weekly basis to talk and to speak about Jesus. It is reasonable to think that someone with so much influence as Jesus would have a lot of historical data backing him up. In reality, outside of, outside of the New Testament, there is little to nothing written about Jesus. True, there are other so-called lost gospels that didn't make the Bible cut. That is, because they are so outlandishly different from the writings of the New Testament, they cannot be classified in the same group as the Bible, even less so as a historic document. A historian by the name of Flavius Josephus, or Josephus, is considered to be by far the biggest authority on Jewish history up to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Jesus, he died about 40 years prior to that event. Out of hundreds of pages written about the events in the nation of Israel or Judea, Josephus wrote a grand total of one paragraph about Jesus. And even that excerpt is universally scrutinized by scholars over its authenticity. It is safe to say that Jesus was very elusive to the eyes of public officials and local correspondents. Merriam-Webster defines Jesus as the Jewish religious teacher whose life, death, and resurrection, as reported by the evangelists, are the basis of the Christian message of salvation. From this definition, we can see that an American dictionary, dictionary of the English language recognizes that the accounts of the four evangelists in the New Testament are not just stories or dramatizations, but actual reports. In the big picture, all that we can gather from the life of Jesus Christ are written specifically in the four Gospels. The rest of the Bible speaks of his effects on the humanity, but his actual life story is described in the Gospels. It is the only credible source available to us to gather any intel on Jesus. A goal of this channel is to study the life and the words of Jesus according to all four Gospels in a linear, generally, generally agreeable chronological order. This order I base on the chart that is, has been printed by the Thomas Nelson publications called The Harmony of the Gospels. It is easily accessible online if you would like to double check. Every gospel writer brings something a little bit different in their depiction of Christ. With God's help, we will observe this harmony and unpack the intent of these writings. Several resources were used for this study, including, but not limited to, various commentaries, study Bibles, Greek original manuscripts, and common sense. Hopefully, this channel will leave you better informed, inspired, edified, and perhaps even entertained. Now a word of introduction about myself. My name is Lubomir. Sometimes I go by Louis. I was born in Ukraine in 1989, moved to the United States when I was 12, presently residing in upstate New York, serving as a deacon at a local Ukrainian evangelical church. For some time, I led a Bible study group concentrating on the topic of Jesus using this layout, which I now decided to bring up online in the form of a podcast. My formal biblical training consists from a couple accredited courses, so please do not take my words for an academic study. 
I am, however, an avid observer and a learner when it comes to the Bible, and my hope and prayer is that this personal research and reflection may serve for the benefit of everyone listening. The title of this channel, A Gospel Treasury, was inspired by reading Matthew 13.52. Jesus said, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasure, new treasures as well as the old. Throughout the duration of this podcast, we will bring out precious gems of God's truth. Some of these may be of a vintage value, well-known and familiar. Others could be something that you never considered before. The objective here is to see what Jesus presents, what difference his life made then, and does it make any difference now? After all, that's what comes with the title of being a Christian, to be like Christ. And now for the remaining of this episode, a brief overview of the Gospels. The Gospels, along with the rest of the New Testament, were originally written in the Greek language. The Old Testament was mostly written in Hebrew. Interestingly, most historians agree that the Jews talked in none of these languages during the, times of Je- during the time of Jesus. The language Judeans spoke was Aramaic. Aramaic has since mostly dissolved and presently spoken in very small communities across the Middle East. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are often referred to as Synoptic Gospels. Synoptic is a Greek word that means to see together. These three Gospels have very similar accounts, and they were all written before the year 70 AD. We mentioned the year a little earlier. 70 AD is an important year in Jewish history because this is when the Romans destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the Holy Temple. The Gospel of John is unique in comparison to the Synoptic Gospels. It was written at some point after the destruction of Jerusalem, approximately between 75 and 85 AD. John's account holds about 90% of sayings and information that is not found in the other Gospels. For whom were the Gospels originally addressed to and what was the purpose of these writings? The difference in the Gospels is in what they emphasize, not as much as the content itself. Synoptic Gospels were addressed to different ethnic groups to show Jesus as the Chosen One, to redeem the people of God, the Messiah. Matthew wrote his gospel for the Hebrews, portraying Jesus as a king. It has several long sermons, most notably the Sermon on the Mount, and many parables. Matthew depicts Christ as a speaker with power and authority. Mark wrote his gospel for the Romans, portraying Jesus as a servant. Biggest part of the Gospel of Mark contains supernatural signs. It is the shortest of the four and was likely the first Gospel written down. Luke wrote his Gospel for the Greeks, portraying Jesus as a man who is relatable and approachable. It is the most comprehensive of the four and serves as a universal message of the good news about Jesus. John wrote his gospel to anybody listening. It was, not, it was not designated for a specific audience, at least that we know of. Logically speaking, John was aware of the previous accounts about Jesus, and thus he wrote what others have omitted. His emphasis was on the divinity of Jesus. At the close of the century, many believers became skeptical about the divine authority of Jesus, and as a result... John wrote his account to portray Jesus as God. Along with his three epistles, or letters, as they're also known, that they are also part of the New Testament, John, he makes a wide use of three words when it comes to Jesus. Light, truth, and love. Throughout the Christian history, the four Gospels attained a status known as a tetramorph. 
the four combination of four elements in one unit, tetramorph. Similar, similarly to our planet Earth being made up of the four classical elements, earth, air, water, and fire, the, the four Gospels, although different accounts, make up a single unit. This unit is portrayed by the symbols of the four evangelists as the living creatures derived from the books of Ezekiel and Revelation. The man, the lion, the ox, and the eagle. This depiction illustrates how imperative these Gospels are to the Christian faith. Which leads to a question. What qualifies these Gospels for such a high position? Are these truly the only documents we can rely on when it comes to Jesus? The canonization or the recognition of the New Testament as we have today and as we know it, it was not formally complete until the end of the 4th century. Despite some rift between the church fathers regarding select epistles, the integrity of the four Gospels was hardly in doubt throughout the entirety of the Christian history. The Gospels were written to different ethnicities living in different geographic locations, but in time these reports they started to cross paths. And seeing how these documents, amongst with other so-called lost Gospels, which were written later, highlighted different events and oracles, the church fathers had to decide which books were to be endorsed. And so, to qualify as a true gospel, the following had to be true. Authors personally knew Jesus, or personally knew the disciples of Jesus. Matthew and John, were, were they were the disciples themselves. Mark and Luke were not, but they are adequate in the next qualification, which is the writers wrote the Gospels among the eyewitnesses. Mark was a close associate to Apostle Peter, and Luke was frequently accompanying Apostle Paul, who in turn spent a considerable amount of time with the disciples. The four Gospels are different by character from other Gospels, the lost Gospels, that is, other materials tend to exaggerate and sensationalize their takes, taking on the appearance of myths or legends. And most were penned well after the last written texts of the New Testament. Lastly, an ironic twist that adds to the credibility of the texts, the small inconsistencies found between the Gospels actually help prove their authenticity. There are a handful of numerical and chronological differences between the reports. And that helps dispel the idea that Christianity is a well-crafted conspiracy. The authors disagree on the order of certain things that they try to remember or ask around like approximately 30 years after their occurrence, whether they were aware of the other gospel reports or not. But the end result and the point conveyed in every event always matches with one another. And on this note, we will conclude the very first episode of A Gospel Treasury. Lord willing, more will be coming soon. Farewell. Farewell.